Hello, my Scorpio lovelies. Welcome to your October general reading. My name is Natasha, also known as Marriage Natasha. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, welcome back. Now, this is my first time doing readings like this for each individual zodiac sign. So if this resonates with you, please let me know in the comments so I can continue doing this for you lovelies. This is for the month of October. It is spooky season and this is for my Scorpios. So make sure you check your sun, moon, rising, and Venus. And I've also been choosing a deck intuitively for each sign, and I just feel like for Scorpios, it's the spooky season. We're doing the tarot of vampires for you guys, so I'm about it. I'm definitely feeling this. I haven't used this deck in a hot minute. It even comes with this book, the Phantasmagoria, and this has kind of the descriptions of all the cards. I highly recommend this deck. If you're interested, you can see kind of my other decks here in the background. Again, I've been choosing a different deck for each sign. And yeah, I'm just going to start shuffling. We're going to get into it. Again, this is a general reading for Scorpios. Again, make sure you check your sun, moon, rising, and Venus where you have a stellium. If you have a stellium in a certain sign, check that out as well. What we're going to do is... First, we're going to pull some tarot cards, past, present, and future, see what's going on for you guys. And then we're going to clarify with some oracle cards. We're going to do oracle from the postcards from the middle space and then a Halloween oracle pull as well because tis the season. It is October. It is Scorpio season. I've always been jealous that Scorpios get Halloween. I always thought that I should be born on Halloween, but alas, I was actually born the day before St. Patrick's Day. Um, but let's check in. What's going on for my Scorpios? Take a deep breath for me. Send me your intention. Think about what your intention for this reading is. What are you hoping to get out of this reading? Take a nice deep breath. These cards are absolutely gorgeous. character cards here. This is at the bottom of the deck. We have the Prince of Knives. I mean, these cards are absolutely gorgeous, guys. Like, we even have some water sign action for sure. We have a mermaid here. Um, yeah, so we have past, present, and future. And the suits of this deck are a little bit different. So scepters are wands, grails are cups, knives are swords, and I'm not sure what pentacles are. I don't see any pentacles here. Let's see. Skulls. Skulls will be the pentacles in this deck. So um, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, we're doing past, present, and future. So in the past, we have the six of scepters, which would be the six of wands, and the five of cups. Now the six of wands is the card of victory. And the five of cups, you can see um, this mermaid, it almost kind of looks like she possibly drank some poison. She's very sad. Her, her grail, her cup is kind of spilt over, um, but you know, to me, because the Six of Scepters, Six of Wands, this is a card of victory. I think you've kind of had the victory over your grief. And that's not to say that your grief is gone. The Five of Cups is a card of grief, of sadness, of loss. Um, traditionally, it's depicted as a person kind of looking at their spilt cups. And you've definitely had some losses. Um, quite a few losses, I'm, I'm picking. And that doesn't mean phys like physical loss, like you lost somebody. It could mean that but you've just had some disappointments. You've had some things, um, you know, in your life very recently, in the recent past that you have been grieving over. However, you've been doing the work and you have kind of had victory over that. And victory over grief doesn't mean, wow, I don't have grief anymore. Like, wow, the grief is gone. That's not what that means because grief is forever. Um, I speak as someone who has lost somebody. Um, the grief doesn't go away. You grow around the grief. Um, I've seen this depiction and I'm, I I've know it's kind of made its rounds on social media of the concept of grief is kind of like the ball in the box and when whatever it is that caused the grief first happens like the ball is massive and kind of takes up the whole box right you're kind of at capacity with your grief. Um, it's very hard to move that box or that ball in that box 
But then as you start to grow and you start to heal, that box gets bigger and that ball gets smaller. So the grief is still there, but it's not as big. You're growing around the grief. And I think that you have done the work here. You have had that victory in the sense that you have grown with your grief and you have kind of mastered handling it, mastered coping with it. Um, so that's great. We love to see that in the past. You know, you've kind of really done your work. I'm hearing you've really done your shadow work here for sure. And then in the present, we have the daughter of knives and she would be the daughter of swords or the princess of swords. I really, I love this aesthetic. I want to look like that, honestly. The, the silver hair is a dream. And the Lord of Grails, so the King of Cups. And he's actually holding, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of a Medusa head and he's on a black horse. And this is in the present. Now, um, court cards can be people, so you might possibly be dealing with an air sign as far as swords go, so Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, or possibly a cups figure, a water, um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, but I, I really see this as kind of more your energy because you kind of had this success over your grief in the present. I feel like you almost, you almost feel like going through whatever you went through and kind of growing from that has made you a little bit on the defensive, has kind of put you in this um, daughter of swords, daughter of knives energy of being a little bit, I don't want to say cold, but she's kind of the ice princess. If we think of the queen of swords as the ice queen, the, the daughter of swords or um, yeah, or the daughter of knives is kind of the, the ice princess. But that's not to say that she is cold and unfeeling. She just can set boundaries. She doesn't take anyone's shit. And I, I feel like you might be kind of feeling bad about that, Scorpio. I think you're kind of like, I almost feel a little bit too cutthroat very Scorpio energy, honestly. You're like, I feel a little bit um, too cold. Like this has kind of changed me in a way. But to counter that, we have to go with the mature masculine cups energy, which is the Lord of Grails, the King of Cups. He is the masculine um, emotional intelligence. Um, cups is the suit of emotions. If you think the water in the cup is, the, is your emotions, um, and Scorpio actually rules the sacral chakra in the body, which is that kind of water energy that if you imagine the pelvis bowl, the pelvic bowl as a bowl, it kind of stores all that water in there, those emotions. And when we start to open up our pelvis, open up our hips, like in hip opening yoga, those em emotions start to spill out. So I feel like the key here, if you, if you don't want to feel as cold, if you don't want to feel as kind of cutthroat, and I feel like you're kind of in this energy um, to prevent yourself from getting back into this energy, the Five of Cups, is emotional intelligence, is processing through the emotions instead of just cutting them off. I feel like the Daughter of Knives, the Daughter of Swords, Princess of Swords, she's like, nope, I'm cutting it off, I'm done, I don't want to deal with it, I'm done, but you, you are still going to have to feel if you want to continue to process you know, <laughs> the the grief of whatever you have been through. And then in the present, we have the Ace of Scepters, so the Ace of Wands, and the Daughter of Grails, so the Daughter of Cups. And I honestly feel like the Daughter of Cups is kind of a combo of these two energies, right? Like, we have the Daughter of Knives and the King of Cups. We need to kind of combine these two to create the Daughter of Grails. So, you know, I think the... The thing with the King of Cups is he can kind of get a bad rep for being too emotional, um, perhaps emotionally immature or too caught up in his emotions. And then again, the Daughter of Knives, the Daughter of Swords is too emotionless. You need to find balance. You need to find balance between feeling the feels and trying to avoid the feels. What does that look like? It looks like healthy coping mechanisms, right? The Daughter of Grails, the Daughter of Cups is that young feminine water energy pisces cancer scorpio and it's about you know feeling your feelings i don't want to say in a not so serious way but in a way that you can kind of move through them and heal them and not feel them so hard like the lord of grails and the five of grails i mean we all have all cups on the bottom here it's like really heavy emotions this one honestly feels like anger, you know, he kind of has that severed Medusa head. And this one feels like complete sadness, loss, grief. And you're trying to not get super emotional. And you can see here, I mean, this Daughter of Grails, 
she doesn't look like she's that emotional because she's processing through it. She's processing through her feelings. I mean, she has a grail. I mean, it's full of blood. She is a vampire here. But it's time to tap into healthy emotional energy, emotional intelligence, instead of just complete emotion raging out or no emotion at all. We need to find balance. And with the, with the Ace of Wands, that's kind of going to be your new fresh start. If you're looking to move on from the Five of Grails, uh, from this grief, you need that fresh start. You need that fresh spark. spark. Um, perhaps it's finding something new that you're passionate about. I feel like you maybe lost yourself in this grief or whatever it was. You kind of lost your fire. You lost what makes you you. And it's time to step back into that. And maybe using whatever that is, that new spark, that um, new passion project to heal. That's going to be the key to your healing. And then we have the Prince of Knives at the bottom of the deck. Um, this, it could be honestly a partnership, perhaps something in the air energy, um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, you might be dealing with some kind of partnership here, but it's very youthful. It's very young and the Prince of Knives, you know, the princes are kind of, it's like that youthful masculine energy. They're not quite masterful, right? They're not quite mastered into the king energy the king of the king of knives the king of swords is he has complete and total control over his thoughts and again i think that you are kind of in this energy of you might not have complete and total control over your thoughts that grief that loss might still be coming up in i think the emotional sense like yes you had victory and when i say victory over it you're not the grief isn't completely running your life now Again, I know what it's like to grieve and I know what it's like to be in that place where you literally can't feel anything else except grief. You can't even function. Um, you had victory over that stage. Now we're in the next stage of grief, right? I'm thinking of like the stages of grief, like acceptance, anger, denial. Um, I forgot what the other ones are. Um, but that's kind of what I'm seeing here is like the stages of grief. And we're not all the way to the end. We're not all the way to acceptance yet. We're getting to like the coping part but what we're struggling with is finding the balance between being, I don't want to feel anything and I want to feel everything. You need to find the healthy balance between those two. And that, again, lies in the Daughter of Cups. So, you know, I know Scorpios, your water sign like me, I'm a Pisces. We like to feel everything um, like at like 10,000 volts. We, we like to feel everything... Uh, just on like level 9,000, right? But we can't, that's not healthy. That's not healthy for us. It might feel good, right? To be in this like King of Cups, like really aggressive, just like super angry, feeling everything. There's like lightning striking behind you, or, like one of those epic, um, <laughs> emotional, whatever. Um, but that's not healthy, but neither is being completely cut off, cut off from your emotions. You need to find that balance. Emotional intelligence, emotional balance for my Scorpio. So let's clarify with some oracle cards. Take a nice deep breath for me. <laughs> Sometimes this deck can get a little draggy. We're definitely definitely being dragged a little bit, Scorpio. So in the position of past, we have invisibility mode. And I think I know, um, I know quite a few Scorpios and that's kind of the vibe of when the going gets tough, Scorpio kind of disappears. And I think you did have to disappear for a little bit to work on that grief, to kind of have the victory over that grief. You went invisible. And Definitely worked in your favor. You know, if you maybe haven't yet, I encourage you to try to try that invisibility mode. What does that mean? Um, maybe deactivating social media for a little bit. Maybe just kind of hermitifying, going inside, taking some time off. And over the <laughs> Daughter of Knives and the Lord of Grails, we have absolutely not. Again, this is not the time to cut off your emotions completely. This is also not the time to have explosive emotions. Absolutely not. Um, I'm hearing fuck around and find out if you're going to continue to be in that energy of either completely not emotional or completely overly emotional, it is not going to work out in your favor. Like it is going to be 
bad times. Zero out of 10. Would not recommend. Absolutely not. Do not say in that energy, my Scorpio lovelies. It's a wake-up call, right? This card says this is not a dream. This is a wake-up call. I think you've maybe been in this this energy of healing from whatever this five of cups is and you think you're healing right when you're in this energy of the daughter of knives and the king of cups or the lord of grails you think that you're healing you're like i got this i don't feel anything or you're like i got this i feel everything right that's coping right and no it's not <laughs> this is a wake-up call the alarm is blaring um this is not a dream this is not the coping that you think it is. I know, again, this feels a little draggy. I do apologize. Um, but sometimes we need to hear it. This is not a dream. You need to wake up and start coping in a healthy fashion. And the last card here in our Oracle deck is protect your ecosystem. You can see it's a heart kind of overgrown with flowers. If you want that heart to heal, which I know, Scorpio, you don't want to admit that your heart was broken or admit that your heart needs some healing, but it does. And it's time to protect your ecosystem. And what does that look like? That looks like setting boundaries. That looks like healthy coping mechanisms. That looks like emotional intelligence. Watering your own garden is what I'm hearing. Um, protecting your ecosystem instead of the ecosystem of others. Or not protecting your ecosystem by, you know, either completely not feeling or feeling too much. You need balance. You need healthy coping mechanisms to protect that ecosystem. Let's get one more here. A Halloween Oracle for my Halloween babies, my Scorpios. If you were born on Halloween, please tell me in the comments because I'm jealous. All right. I haven't pulled this card yet. We have the mummy and it says change. And we definitely got to change something up, my friends. Let's see what this card is all about. The ancient Egyptians took death very seriously. Death was not seen, as many of us see it, a f finality to be dreaded, but it's just the beginning of a new life and often eternal life in a better place, the afterlife. The practice of honoring and preserving the body through a comple um, complex process of mummification was central to ancient Egyptian culture. This was not just a physical embalming process, but a carefully enacted ritual process that ensured preservation in the next world. Many other cultures also mummified their dead, including the Incas, the Argentinians, the Maori, and many of the Torres Strait Islands. In our modern horror genres, the mummy has become an icon. From early horror writing at the turn of the century to very popular films, the mummy, best movie ever, and the mummy returns, second best movie ever. <laughs> that doesn't say that, I'm just saying my personal opinion. Anyways, the plot normally revolves around the mummy returning to life and cursing and hunting down the living. The discovery of King Tutankhamun's tombs and other hidden Egyptian treasures in the 1920s in particular sparked an explosion in mummy-related films and literature. Should you pull the Moaning Mummy card from the deck, know that change is inevitable and that no matter how hard you try, things will not be preserved exactly the same way. The card also indicates that this change will be for the better. The endings, the closed doors, the barriers. This is just a healthy pause and an indication that a change of tactics is needed. You are not cursed. You have just developed a pattern. You can take control and change it. I'm going to read that last bit again. This is just a healthy pause and an indication that a change in tactics is needed. You are not cursed. You have just developed a pattern. You can take control and change it. You got to change how you're coping, my friends. My lovely Scorpios, you got to change that coping mechanism. I know it sucks. I know it hurts. But I believe in you. You got this. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween, a wonderful Scorpio season. Please let me know if this reading resonates in the comments. If you want me to do more of these. And I will see you next time, my lovely Scorpios.